Once a giant, always a giant. Welcome back to All Things Giants. Today we're here with license plate guy, aka Mr. Rubach, one of the like the greatest Giants men I have seen in my entire life. This guy's been the Super Bowl, Giants Super Bowls. He has all the tickets, he has everything. And it's honestly amazing to, to see. And as a fan, you only could hope you can achieve some of the things and see some of the things he has as a Giants fan. Um we are we're going to talk about how like just explain to me like i know you you probably get access all the time what made you fall in love with the sport of football and just everything that it has to bring to the table well first off man thanks for thanks for having me on um if i need a hype man you're hired bro i'm telling you right now like thank you i'm, I'm here, just gonna bro. get you there for you i'm just gonna get you to do all my introductions i'm straight after that <laughs> uh listen if, if, if you're a Giants fan, chances are you were bred into the family. So, you know, if your dad, your grandmother, your aunt, your uncle, your grandpa, whoever it was, you know, was a, was a Giants fan, your ass was a Giants fan. So as far as I can remember, you know, as a little kid, you know, we were fortunate enough to have tickets mm -hmm. and it was, you know, get up, let's go. We're going, we're going to catch a train. We're going to get to the stadium early you know, we're going to, we're going to eat, we're going to eat, you know, it, it was, it was the day to spend with your father or, or maybe with your mother, or maybe it was the day to spend with, with the, your family. Okay. And if you're fortunate enough to have more than two tickets, then maybe your whole family went, you know, we, we weren't at that time. So it was, it was, uh, it was my pop and I, and, and, and nothing beat that. So, you know, as far as I can remember, that's what it is to be a Giants fan. And, you know, Giants, Giant fans are old. You know, we've been doing this a long time. It's the history of Giants football. You know, we were one of the, the originals. So, so that's kind of what got me into it, man. And lifelong, you know, lifelong football fan and, and, and definitely a lifelong Giants fan. Yeah, you mentioned the relationship. I think me being a Giants fan and my father being a Giants fan, that really, I know a lot of father, son, sons are like really close, but I think like you said, the sport of football and us both being Giants fans really put us together and had us create a bond like this to where every Sunday we were watching the games and we were discussing it even after the games or before the games. And we, I think only, I've only been to a Giants game once in my life. I, I, I live in Washington, so I'm not that far, but I'm a good amount of, away from New York. But any chance we got, we were there. Um, any chance we get to watch on Sundays, we're always, we're always to have the TV on 20 minutes before just watching the game, bonding and things like that. So, yeah, I gotta, I gotta tell you, Keith, how old are you, Keith? 18. See, see, there's two things like, you know, you might be the last generation, not even now you're, you're young, but you might be the last ones that, no, I can't say it like that. You're, you're lucky that your father's a Giants fan and you're a Giants fan because in this day and age with free agency and fantasy football and everything going on, the chances of your family, I know it's going to sound really weird, but the chances of your whole family being a one team family, mm. that's not, that's not really the case anymore. I would love to do a study on like, what's the percentages of, of families that are really one team fans of. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it would be. I bet you would, it wouldn't be that high. Yeah, I guarantee you. I be. I know. I know a lot of my dad's friends and people and families like that. They all have many different teams in each household. Actually, here my stepmother's a 49ers fan, so it's like we battle as you know. When the Giants went to the Super Bowl both those times, we went against the Niners, and that that just built a whole lot of chaos in the house. Yeah, if, it, if, it, if that was here, man, I'd, I'd have to, when I was young, I'd have to look for another place to live, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to get my brother, my little brothers, I got two little brothers, one of the age of nine and one who's six, and we're trying to get them like in the Giants, Giants family, Giants mojo thing, so they know. Yeah, meanwhile, meanwhile, they probably running around with a Mahomes jersey. Oh yeah, they and, got them all. I'm telling you, I'm telling, but I really believe that, that social media video games um uh you know fantasy football i believe that has a lot to do with that 
you know? Yeah. And that's just that's just the way it is. Yeah, uh, you mentioned fantasy football. Me and my dad actually do that together. So late as of lately, I hate to say it, but we've been steering a bit away from the Giants players because, you know, production-wise, it just hasn't been there the last few years. But that's another – that's a, like, I guess – to your point, I, I kind of agree with you because it does have less importance to a specific team when you have a, a fantasy team together. If I'm sharing that with my dad, then we're watching multiple players instead of just one specific team. And it's just like kids. See that, that you, you're, you nailed it right there because I don't play fantasy. Mm-hmm. I never, I never will. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have a team full of giants, <laughs> uh, I would not win a lot, uh, <laughs> just the way it is. Um, yeah. And you know, like I, I go to a, I go to the away games with a good friend of mine, and he plays fantasy, mm-hmm. and he doesn't obviously he wants the Giants to win every game, and he's a crazy diehard like I am, but like under his breath, I see him saying, you know, if the Eagles are going to score, I'm not saying I want them to, but if the Eagles are going <laughs> to score, that, yeah. I really hope it's the so and so. Like, man, shut up man <laughs> so i can't now nah, i'm not down with fantasy i never will be never yeah it's it's, it's a hard thing to root for but i totally understand where your friend's coming from it never those times where you'd be like uh i don't i want to win but like if yeah. they could score i wouldn't be mad at it not I, no I, way man not here bro never yeah it's 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 a lot fantasy does bring in a lot and the new younger like my two younger brothers they might not Regardless of if they become Giants fans or not, I think fantasy football does take a take away from that type of one focus on one team type of thing because they now have to worry about many players. I guess I kind of lucked up in that when fantasy football wasn't as popular and we had to sit there and just watch the Giants football and honestly watching the Super Bowls and then games after that, the 2016 season. That was our most recent playoff season. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're 18 years old, man. You weren't even... Other than that 16 that you just said, you were just a little kid, man. Yeah. It was... You were just a little kid. So so I feel, you know what? You were like me because mm-hmm. they weren't good back in the day. Mm-hmm. So so when the Giants won a Super Bowl in 86 and I was just a little teenager, you know, I was like, woo, chance of the world. <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, obviously they won three more after that. But, but you know, you were just a kid when they won. You, you definitely didn't know the, the 07 team. Mm-hmm. And you knew the 11 team, but but still, so young, you really, unfortunately, haven't witnessed winning football. Yeah, and it's been rough, but I, I'm going to stay diehard to this team. Many people ask me, like, I rep, I got the Giants um, mask due to the pandemic. I got the hats. I got it all. And the people are like, how can you support your team and rep your team when they're going through what they're going through? And I tell them, it's just like, it's not even about – what they're going through right now. I'm going to be for this team, even if we go knock on wood, if we go 0-16 for the next five seasons, I'm still going to rep this team like we just won the Super Bowl. I don't understand that thinking, though. All right? Seriously, real real talk. So so you're not allowed to root when they're losing. You're only allowed to root when they're winning. So you don't want to starve with us. You just want to eat with us when things are right. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. It's like, you can't just hop on and off a bandwagon of fandom. If you're a fandom, you know, it's good. I mean, you want to open up your closet and you want to have multiple team jerseys. Okay. Do your thing. Like, I, I just don't, I don't have that. You know, I, yeah. you and I, we can't tell other people how to fan and I'll never tell another person how to fan. I'll never tell them that they can't have their opinion. I just don't understand how someone could say, you only can root for your team when they're winners. That makes zero sense to me. Absolute zero sense. Cause it's like, I want to feel the satisfaction of when my team is three and 13 to when we're 10 and six and we're winning Super Bowls. That's satisfaction and going through the worst with them and then being at the highs with them, it'll just feel so much better than, okay, they're winning. So I'm going to root for them now. And it just, it just doesn't make sense to me. That's correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. You've been to a Super Bowl, a giant Super Bowl, right? You went to the Super Bowls, right? I've been to five Super Bowls. I only talk about four of them. <laughs> Just explain that. Like I went to, I, I'm very blessed and very grateful. I was able to experience last year's Super Bowl, the 49ers and the uh, Chiefs. I'm very thankful for that. But I've yet to see that. I, I, if the Giants ever make it to the Super Bowl, I will be there and I will make sure that I am at that game. Just explain to me, watching your team in the Super Bowl, what that's like and what you're feeling throughout the game. 
truthfully, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not because, because first of all, the stars have to align for your team to even get there. Or at least that's the feeling of giant fans mm -hmm. because giant fans have never giants football has never been great. Mm -hmm. You know, you've never been like, Oh yeah, next year I'm going to Super Bowl again. Or next year I'm going to Super Bowl again. Like I would love that feeling. Oh, we yeah. don't have that feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's not us. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, when you're seven and nine or whatever, and you're starting your road warriors and you start beating teams in the playoffs, I, let's just go through Super Bowl 42, for example. Mm -hmm. So the Giants play the, the, the Patriots the last game of the season. They should have beat them. They didn't. They wind up losing the game. And the Giants go into the uh, playoffs. And, they, they, you know, they got to go to Dallas and they got to win. And, and McCorders, you know, uh, uh, intercepts the ball. Oh, no, it was Tampa. Sorry. They go in to beat Tampa and on to Dallas. And McCorders intercepts the ball. And it's like, oh, my God, we're on the way to Green Bay. And then you go to Green Bay and you're facing a team that you're, you should not be. Sure. And it's, it's minus a billion degrees. And, oh, my God, you win that. And then you're facing the undefeated mm -hmm. Patriots in the Super Bowl. And I know this is different because you asked me what it's like. And I'm talking about facing an undefeated team. It's kind of oh. not fair. But it's like the whole week, are you giving yourselves a shot? Yeah, because you beat a couple of good teams but you're facing the undefeated, undefeated Patriots. Yeah, it's like So the whole week, the whole the whole day of the Super Bowl, you got no nails, you you you're sweating all day. It's 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 really surreal to be going to a Super Bowl, but it, it's it's fun when you win. Mm -hmm. But man, I've been to a loss too and it wasn't no fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my stepmother, I got to, I said she was a 49ers fan and they lost last year and they were up 20 to 10 with five minutes to go. So you could feel the Super Bowl and yep. I could only just see the world of pain that they, that she was going through. And I can only imagine like if my team, me and my dad were actually talking about it and we were talking about teams that have lost Super Bowls. Like we mentioned the Falcons and the Seahawks, like just imagine you're so close to a Super Bowl ring and enjoying that excitement. And then it's pulled right from you that feeling is just like, it's, it's unexplainable. Hey, you weren't alive, but could you imagine losing all your Super Bowls, like the Bills? Oh, yeah. I... Like if you were in that fan base, like every one you go to, you lose every one. Yeah, like, I, like that, nah, man, nah. I, nah. For that, yeah. Hey, dude, do me a favor, man. Do me a favor, Keith. You're 18 years old. You're very close with your dad, I could tell, right? Very. Make a pact with him. No matter what, and anybody that's even listening to this when you post it or whatever, make a pact with your best friend, your father, your grandfather. When the day comes, please don't let money stand in your way. Let's say the game is in Arizona and it's already $1,000 to, to fly out there. It's $500 to go get a hotel room. It's $400 to get a car. You got to eat all weekend. Uh, just make a pack with your dad that when the Giants go, you're going. No excuse in the world could stop you guys from taking that trip. As soon as we're done with this, I will make sure I walk up to him and we talk about it. And and not, I, I can almost guarantee you that he'll, he'll hit me with a yes because he's almost as big a Giants fan as me. Like he's a bit older so he's not into like I know you're into I see you talking about free agents draft and things like that he's more of a he watches the sick like he'll he'll talk to, he basically gets his free agent and draft stuff from me so I tell That's him cool. about that and then when we watch all the 16 games he's excited in that kind of way so I guarantee you when that time when we, after, as soon as we're done with this I will make sure yeah man just back. just put like put like I don't care five dollars a week because who knows when we're going back? You might have a million dollars. But anyway, you just, just put five dollars away a week, and all of a sudden you're like, "Dang, we got like eight thousand dollars in here because we ain't no good for a while." And then all of a sudden you just have enough money to do it because a lot of people say they're gonna do it, and then when the time comes, you know, everybody's got things on their plate. But that's a trip of a lifetime that you will never, ever, ever forget when you get to take it with your with your dad your grandfather your aunt whoever mm -hmm. yeah we're speaking about super bowls um 
we've been in a world of pain the last few years as Giants fans. Explain to me the first step. If you were D- DG, Dave Gettleman, if you were Dave Gettleman, explain to me what your first step would be to get this team going. Like we're in the off season now. What would be your first step in order to get this team in a Super Bowl ready form? Or what do you think is the first step to even get to a Super Bowl ready form? Resign? No, 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 my bad, my bad. Look, free agency, big time free agency has proven that you're not going to get a winning team. It's just the way it is. You in free agency, you're spending a ton of money. A, a money for sometimes B or C players. So you're spending a lot and you're supposed to, it's free agency. You know, they get, mm-hmm. they got you, you don't have them. They got you. Yeah. Sure. So I truly believe that that's not the way you go and, and, and build your team. I do believe that you build it through the draft. And unfortunately, even though Dave Gen- Dave Gettleman has hit on a lot, he's also missed on a ton. Mm-hmm. And here we are ready for, for this year to come up. And I think, the first thing DG has to do is he has to figure out a way to sign your best pass rusher and your best run stopper. And that is no offense to Dex. You have to sign Leonard Williams and you have to sign Tomlinson. Sure. for sure. I want both. I don't believe the giants are going to get both. Yeah. I, I, talk I, about I don't, I, I think they might work something out with Tomlinson and then maybe tag D, you know, maybe tag Leonard. If they tag Leonard Williams, he's going to get $19 million, $19 million. So, so look, I don't pretend that I know all the numbers, Keith. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not, you know, a cap guy and I'm not going to sit here and tell you this and that, or else I seriously would be working for the Giants. Mm -hmm. But with that said, I believe you got to build through the draft. I really hope they get a couple of key players in free agency and then they got to kill the draft. And they got to keep killing the draft. And in two years, I think the Giants will be back. And yes, I think Daniel Jones will be under center for that. Yeah, I, Daniel Jones, in my opinion, he gets a lot of hate and backlash for a lot of things that isn't his fault. And like you said, you brought up that I'm personally not, not a lot of, I'm not into the analytics or things like that. I get a lot of my stuff from like Twitter and things like that. Justin Pennick does a lot of analytics and things like that. But the Giants... Offense, like their off, offensive line was last in pass block win rate. And you can't expect Daniel Jones to sit back in the pocket and deliver good passes or consistency when in two seconds, as soon as he says hike, the defense is in his face. Or in Jason Garrett's scheme, he has straight curl, curl routes all across the field. That's not going to go nowhere. No, I, I'm, a, I'm definitely agreeing with you. You know, don't believe everything you read on Twitter. You know, Jason Garrett's passing tree is not the best. Mm -hmm. Was he holding back the offense a bit? Yeah, I think he was actually. I am on that bandwagon. However, when you don't have that much time to throw, maybe you do need some curling routes and some five-yard in and outs Mm -hmm. to get the ball out of Daniel Jones' hands quicker. Um, And and that's a big problem. If you're not blocking, you got to have to keep a tight end or two in. Mm-hmm. So it's a problem. And, I, and and getting back to what you said about Justin, I'll tell you, Justin and Bobby really do a good job with the with the, the numbers because I'm not a numbers guy either. I don't I don't care about the analytics. I'm not going to tell you their third down completion rate and they're running. But they got me into that. Yeah. I kind of look I kind of look forward to seeing some numbers. I like so O-line so I do like that piece. But Jason Garrett, I would not have minded him taking a head coaching job. I also don't mind him back because let him start to, 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 to get this relationship with Jason Garrett going, Daniel Jones. And, uh, and, and, and I agree with you about the hate. Um, just look at Eli Manning. He got the same hate. I believe Daniel Jones is going to be the quarterback. He should be the quarterback. And I'll tell you two things. This is his third year coming up. Josh Allen just had a ridiculous third year. Mm -hmm. So even though the jury is still out on Jones, give him this year. Mm -hmm. If he proves 
that he's your quarterback, great. If he proves he's not, then the Giants are in trouble for a couple of years. Yeah. It, and it, I, I only ask that the fan base have a tiny bit of patience, and that's hard because we've been losing for years. Yeah. And it's very frustrating. But you cannot complain about Daniel Jones until you have a successor. And that's what always bothered me about people killing Eli Manning. I used to say, okay, if Eli Manning's not the quarterback, no problem. Who is taking over? Mm -hmm. So stop complaining about him when you have no one to take over. It wasn't going to be Davis Webb. It wasn't going to be Kyle Loletta. Yeah. You know, it wasn't going to be Geno Smith. So just let it happen until the Giants got a quarterback. And that quarterback happens to be Daniel Jones. So let's see. I think he has a I think he has a lot of potential. And people like to point out the turnovers and the things he has. But I still think just judging him and solely him, none of the none of the factors around. I think he has the potential. I like his work work ethic. He brought on nine pounds of muscle. I just think this guy is committed to being our quarterback for the future. And I do believe he can, he has what it takes to be the year three quarterback and he will be under center. Like you said, the next time we're in the Super Bowl. Um, I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you about Joe judge and I want to hear your, your first thoughts when you heard the giants are signing Joe judges hair head coach. And then now that the season's over, what do you, what do you think from the beginning to now? I know most of us didn't know too much about Joe judge when he was first hired. And then you had to do a whole bunch of research. what do you think? All right. That's a great question, Keith, because I've been asked a lot about the Daniel Jones reaction and not about my judge reaction. And I get beat up a little bit from my Jones reaction, but that I don't, I don't think it's fair. And I'm going to tell you why. So do you remember my Daniel Jones reaction at the draft? Yes. <laughs> I think I had the same reaction. Everybody, all of us. It wasn't, it wasn't for Daniel Jones. Mm-hmm. It was for not getting Josh Allen. Exactly, exactly. I don't know why people don't understand. I wanted my my pick in the draft, and I was very vocal about it, was I wanted Devin White. Mm -hmm. I wanted Devin White no matter what. And then the the, the Bucs took him. And then then it was was Josh Allen up next. I thought the Giants were going to get him. I, I lost out on on uh, on White, and all of a sudden, when they picked Daniel Jones, my reaction was, "It's not. What do you mean? It's 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 not. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's not I- Allen." So going to Judge, I had the same reaction. I was like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait! It's 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 not. What's his name over there in uh, in Carolina?" Matt Rule, Matt Rule, yeah. You know, it's it's not Matt Rule who was Giants coach before. Who, by the way, I'm co- uh, I'm friendly with. So I was like, I was like, it's not Matt Rule, even mm-hmm. though he wasn't leaving Carolina anyway. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't mean somebody doesn't like the hiring. So, like you said, we go get tape, we go online, we Google, we this, we that, and I still was like, oh, all right, you know, look, we came from McAdoo to Shermer to Judge. Oh my God, did the Giants? Th- and mess this up three in a row <laughs> and then when this guy was talking oh yeah man, i was ready to put on a helmet <laughs> so and i love his work this is how i'll i'll sum it up with this mcadoo is a great football mind he really is pat Shermer, an excellent football mind joe judge a great football coach and that's what i believe the giants have and he ain't going anywhere for years so buckle up because he's a giants coach for a very long time when i heard his speech i I was in the middle i was actually in the middle of a class when or or no i was in the middle of something i remember for school and when i i I, like i was going through the joe judge and was like oh my god joe this is joe judge's first time talking so i had i had it on and i was listening and I'm, i'm hearing him and he's so assertive and he knows what he wants to do he knows how he's going to get it done and everything and I was just like man like sign me up I'll do what you tell me to do I, I don't exactly. care like I, I'm with you and I, I couldn't believe it and I was like 
with the my my problem with McAdoo and Shermer was this. It was like one, they didn't show enough emotion on the sideline. It was just a straight face throughout the game. They were okay if it was bad. They were okay if it was good. And then in the media, it was just like, uh, you're, you're giving me coach, coach speak. Uh, you're telling me what I want to hear every time. And I was like, I can't have that. But when Joe Judge told me, and, and what really hit me was when after the Philadelphia game, he said, we had, we had 16 chances to make the playoffs. So once he said that, I was like, he points the finger to himself. My, my grandmother actually says, when you're pointing the finger at somebody else, you have three pointing back at yourself. That's one thing that he shows himself and how he does a lot of self-evaluation and how he knew, okay, yeah, Philadelphia blatantly tanked and gave up that game, but we, can, we cannot leave our playoff chances in their hands. We have to take care of what we had to take care of. At one point, we were the number one, we were number one in the division. If we would have won out, although it was unlikely we had a tough schedule, we would have been in the playoffs. So we controlled our own destiny, and we didn't do that. And just hearing him and how confident he feels about this team was, like, really amazing to hear. I totally agree with every single point you just said right there. And, <laughs> I, and then just to further further up on that eagle thing, you know, everybody I, – I obviously get a lot of hate online, you could imagine. I, oh, yeah. I get a lot of love, but I get a lot of hate. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, Eagle fans are like, stop crying, win more games. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but we didn't. The point is, you're still tanked. Mm. And I st- I'm still mad at that. But, yeah, of course you want to win more games. You can't worry about yourself. If Evan Ingram would have caught that ball against the Eagles, we wouldn't even been wor- we, didn't, we wouldn't even been watching the Washington game because we would have been in the playoffs. It's you control what you have to control. Now we spoke about free agents a couple minutes ago. I'm gonna bring it back up, and then we'll talk about the draft. Um, one guy that you think in order that that really could change this team. Like I know, I, I, and you can even get you can even trade for somebody, and you can either give the details or not. I know you said you're not big in the in the analytics and things like that, but who is one player you think is a must add going into free agency that could take that can take the Giants to the next level? Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay, uh, yeah, and then and then what do you want? You want to talk about Corey Davis? You want to talk about full? You want to talk about you want to talk about guys? Here's my problem with free agency: the wide receivers out there are looking for rings, mm-hmm. and 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 the bag, mm-hmm. and I believe the Giants c- can't offer either. <laughs> so, so I, 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 what sucks is the Giants are going to wind up getting the bottom of the free agency wide receiver. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't your question. Your question was who could change it? Robinson could change it. Mm-hmm. And I'm sticking with that one. Galladay is going to be probably franchise tag. Robinson's going to go someplace where he could get a ring. The Giants are going to wind up with a free agent. They are. You know, they've been. They've been attached to Corey Davis for 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 a minute now, um, Samuel. and and another one. But if I was going to sign a free agent, that's who I'd want, man. Or I'll take Shaq. I'll take Sack Barrett. <laughs> Let him go sack some for Giants. But he's going to get a billion dollars too. Yeah, he's he'll probably he he's most likely staying in Tampa. But like agreed, you, just I, like I, Godwin. Yeah, yeah, they're not. He's staying. Yeah, it's no way they're gonna let because they know they 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 want to run it back and like you said, like, even though, even though, even though you have a a billion giant fans already putting them in 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 edits in in yeah. giant uniforms, only gonna make us cry at the end anyway. I, that's what I'm saying. Like I, I started, I wanted looking more into Corey Davis because you know, like you said, it's it's seeming like that's where the Giants are and that's where we're end up signing a yep. guy, a lowering guy. But like you said, my dream guy is Galladay. And even if they franchise tag him, I, Gettleman has to pick up the phone and be like, what do you want from him? Like, I want him and he, he should be in New York. Yeah, I don't, I, don't know what, I don't know who the Giants are really set on. I'm dying to know that too. Um, but I'll tell you, man, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what you do. Do you, do you go get a Golden Tate type player? not one of the big wigs you go get a golden tape player and then and then you go to the draft for the for the uh receiver you know because that's a mm-hmm. i guess free agency is going to tell us if that's the way the giants are going to go yeah 
free agency will uh, and people right now are having the mock drafts and things like that but you really can't do mock drafts until after free agency because teams feel like they need in free agency and if everybody's like oh the giants need a wide receiver one and then we go out and sign galladay it was like okay now where else can we go in the draft at 11 because we've got a number one guy been saying that for for 20 years what you just said yeah wait till free agency settles down and then make your 50 million mock drafts yeah then then you can do that and it's seeming and I, I, I'll save your time that you got things to do. So I, I'll f- wrap it up with this. Um, you good. At the 11, there's, like you said, a million things you can do. And I know we said we'll save the mock drafts, but just similar to the last question, what is like, what's your dream scenario about things? You can trade back, trade up, trade down for a player. Who's the guy you want at 11? Or do you want to trade down and get somebody? I'm not trading no draft picks, bro. If anything, I'll trade back in the draft and 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 gain a, a player or two. Um, if the Giants are really set on one or two players and they're both gone, go ahead, man. Go back a couple spots, grab two more players. I mean, I mean, look at look at Jefferson. Did, did you think Jefferson was gonna blow up on a scene like that? Cause I didn't. All pro. So look, I'm a big Jamar Chase fan. Oh, yeah. I want him more than Waddle. But I'll take Waddle, mm-hmm. and I'll definitely take Chase. I'll take Parsons. I'll take Farley. He ran. A I'll take deep. this. We're deep. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Shoot, always. You ready? I'm ready. All them boys on the table at eleven. Everybody, Everybody. including Sewell. Who are you taking? Wow, you added so when you added, I was gonna say chasing, you added Sewell. It was like, um, that's tough. That's a really tough question. Uh, I'm taking, I'm taking the one person the Giants fan would absolutely, the smart ones, the small percentage of them would like it, but 95% of the fan base will go crazy. I'm taking Sewell. I was, I, I, that was my, I was like, you gotta sure, like. We want Daniel Jones to be our guy, so we've got to save him. And the right tackle, Cameron Fleming, you probably feel differently about this. I don't know how you feel about him, but I just it was hard to watch at times and the mistakes he would make. And having a rookie or now a second year, Andrew Thomas, you can move him to right and then have a generational talent like Sewell on the left side. Now Daniel Jones has the protection and we can really evaluate what he can do. I would love I'm take I'm taking Sewell. Twice during a week and five times on a weekend, I'm taking that dude and not looking back. And 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 if it takes me another year to get my wide receiver to get this, I'm doing that. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm not gonna rush going to take one of the one of the major arguments that I have is Saquon Barkley. And did the Giants do the right thing in 2018? Look. I didn't want Saquon Barkley. I wanted a quarterback. Looking back, the quarterbacks that I wanted didn't work out anyway. And I wasn't unhappy we got Barkley because he's the greatest freaking athlete I've ever seen in my life. (laughs) And and I love him. I love him. But the Giants didn't even take a phone call to trade back. They could have got they could have got three, four picks for that spot. Yeah. Five picks. Good picks, too. So and and a couple of linemen. Mm-hmm. So if the scenario comes up again with that, I don't know. I, I I think you take Sewell, man. Yeah. I really do. I think I think you take it and you don't look back and and let all the wide receivers, uh people that did mock drafts just absolutely I'd stay over Twitter for a week after that. Yeah, and, and it's not the glamorous playmaker pick and things like that but that's the like you look at Dallas for instance they spent years and years picking O-linemen in the draft and now they're oh for many years their quarterbacks were sitting in the backfield peacefully their running backs were a thousand two thousand yards because they just had the holes and everything now let me ask you I know I said I ended but I'm I have to ask you this I've talked I've discussed it with a few other Giants fans I've talked to this is arguably one of the most controversial questions I've asked in my entire life. Would you consider trading Saquon Barkley? 
Uh, you, it's not wrong to bring that up now. It's going to be a very popular question uh, because of 16 to $18 million. It's going to take a year to, to, to keep him. Um, it's not a controversial question because it's going to be brought up a million times from this day on. Mm -hmm. um, if I was a GM and I love, I love Saquon Barkley and I don't want him to go anywhere and he's going to lead the league in rushing next year. Um, yeah, I said it. Uh, I, I would, cons I would take the phone calls. I would 100% take the phone calls. And if I was blown out of the water, um, I would, I would sit down with my brain trust and I would be like, all right, look, we got, we got someone's entire draft board and, and, and another running back. All right, let's do it. Uh, uh, you know, if someone came back with a first rounder and, 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 a, and, a, and a fourth rounder, I'd be like, nah, what are you kidding me? It's Saquon Barkley. Yeah. But to each his own, you're going to get a million people to have different opinions on that. And, and it's going to cause a lot of fighting. Oh, you're yeah. definitely going to have some fights. I see it. Even with the smallest things, Giants fans are <laughs> picking at each other and saying things. And I'm just like, y'all are arguing over this, but I know. A I'm not down with that, Keith. You you know me. You follow me. I'm not, yeah. I'm not down with the arguing, bro. Oh, yeah. It don't mean no, don't make no sense to me. It is pointless. And, and my, the thing that just amazes me the most is how some people think they're higher than others. And they're like, no you're childish or you're goofy because your opinion is this and you think that. And it's like, everybody has their right to their opinion and you can't tell them they're wrong for that. So, so, you know, as you, as you grow in this podcast world of yours, I, I I'm going to, I'm going to leave you with some, some words of advice. Mm -hmm. Look, I've been doing this a very long time. I wasn't, I was always license plate guy. But I was never a license plate guy on social media. I was doing this before this crap. And I, I didn't get any hate. And then hate comes because of following. Hate comes because of jealousy. People will love you, Keith. People will hate you. And the people that hate you are going to hate you for the same exact reasons why the others love you. So. You're never going, you're never going to make everybody happy. So I'm not telling you to turn a blind eye because nobody really turns a blind eye to everybody. When everybody, I don't give a F, you, you kind of do because yeah. you're talking about it. Yeah, you're you kind of do. Just know that it's going to come from a place of jealousy. And, you know, when you're arguing with someone, just remember if it gets personal, then they're done proving their point. They have nothing left to say. So they're going to turn it into a personal attack. Mm -hmm. When that happens, just bow out. It's okay not to, not to go talk about their mom, you know, no, or talk about their height or their ugly or you, you know, this and that. It's okay. You already won. Once they start attacking you personally, you, you won. You've done your job. So be, so be careful because when you start to get good guests and, and like, oh, shoot, he's putting something out again. People are going to hate you for it. Mm -hmm. Believe that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That, I, I'm always willing to listen to advice, and that is a great piece of advice because I see a lot of people, and I know a lot of even NFL players, they say they don't, but uh, we all are human. And when people say some things, it's like people have to understand everybody's human. You've got feelings, and it's just you've got to be able to, like, figure out, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to have it motivate me and make me want yeah. to do it even more. And That's I really so, it's appreciate true. you and things. And, and thank you a lot for telling me that, that piece of advice. It yeah. A lot I has, just, was it yes, yesterday? I think it was yesterday or the day before. Uh, uh, I teamed up with Darnay Holmes. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Incredible, man. He's given me his first interception jersey against Russell Wilson, Wilson and the Seahawks. yeah. yeah. And we're going to put it, I put it up on my license plate guy on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and everywhere. And we're going to raise money for the Pasadena Giants, this organization that, that, that he runs. And somebody said something to Darnay, like on his Instagram, it was like, oh, license plate guy, don't get involved with him. You know, he's, he's this, 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 and this. 
you know, only cares about himself, does this, thinks he's better than everyone. And it's funny because everything that he said is so untrue. Mm -hmm. So as, as just for a goof, I decided, you know what? A lot of people would tell me to ignore that. So I answered him back. And I was like, let me ask you something. Do you think I care about what you think of me? If I think I'm better than anybody else, which I, which I don't, mm -hmm. I've only ever said that giant fans rock together. But I said, all of those things I could care less about. What you should care is that I raised over $150,000 for various charities. That's what you should care about. Mm -hmm. Don't care about that I wear stupid plates, if that's what you want to think. That's okay. I'm cool with that. Don't, don't, don't care if I got long blonde hair. Your hair is Who amazing. cares about that? It's amazing. Just know what you do for charities. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, whatever. You know, I said, whatever. All right, I won. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> at that point, it's like you you said that. And most of these people that say bad things and who want to get it's just for attention and they want you to ignore. And somebody of your following, I can only imagine the world of people who are in your DMs or in and, and all that just giving you a world amount of hate just so they can get a response from license plate guy. And, and I just don't understand why some people have it have it in them to say such hateful things is like it doesn't make no sense man did nothing to you it's like it don't make no sense as a matter of fact i i tweet a lot about i tell people all the time look if you're sending me messages the chances of me seeing your dm is slim to none because i'd rather not go in there and see stuff i don't want to see mm -hmm. and you know i don't want to i don't want to sound you know, uh, selfish here, but mm -hmm. so many people are looking for either a freebie, mm -hmm. like, yo, let me get a cleat, mm -hmm. or can you help my friends, friends, aunts, sisters, nephew, who, you know, is sick. And I feel so bad when I have to say, well, well how can I help? And they either want money or, or items that I'm like, well, I'm not rich. Mm -hmm. And two, like my items go to charity. So it's so hard. To, I just stop looking in my DMs. I just stop answering them. And I don't even, I don't even open them. I don't even open them now. You can, you can ask my father. This is a hundred percent truth. I, when, I, when I saw that, like I, I opened up my phone and I was, and it said that you responded. I was like, I ran right to him. I was like, check this out. Like he actually responded. And I was like, I, uh, leading up to this, I was like, man, like I was really, I was thinking about it all day leading up to it, preparing and things like that. And I was like, it truly meant a lot that, cause I, I, I can only imagine the amount of DMs and the amount of people trying to get in contact with you. And it really was special that you took time out of your day to be in this and be, and be interviewed by me. And it really truly means a lot. And I can only say, thank you. That's all I really can do is just say, thank you for coming on the show and joining me and talking, talking Giants football. It's been amazing. Yeah. Hey, look, I, I appreciate you reaching out. You're, you're, you seem like a really nice young man. You see a big giants fan, all that good stuff. Keep doing what you're doing and don't stop reaching out to players and, and, and reach out to players, agents and reach out to players, friends sometimes, and maybe not their families, but <laughs> reach out and, and, and try and get those interviews and don't stop because you never know one time you're going to reach out to someone and they're going to get back to you and, and maybe they can open up another door that you didn't have open before, man. So don't stop your grind. Keep doing what you're doing. Let the hate settle, get all the love and grow on that. Yeah. Thank you, man. Uh, it, it really means a lot. I'm, I'm definitely going to do, do as much and take that advice. I'm going to, I'm going to keep reaching out to players. I've tried to reach out to many players and a big part of success is failure. And people think of failure as something negative and no failure is good. It's something you need to at one motivate you, but it's something you're always going to get. I guarantee you every football player and every NFL coach and things like that haven't, haven't had to battle one thing of adversity and everybody has to go through it. And it's just, yep. It, it's all about how you get back up from falling is what matters. So yeah, really. I, Correct, man. Amen. Thank you a lot. Uh, this has been all things giants with license plate guy. Peace out. Yeah.